Well, if you've been paying attention to what's happening in the theme parks with Disney, you'll know that they've made a lot of announcements about changes coming to the parks, and they made a big hoopla at D23, but they did leave out some details in terms of where Monsters Inc. Land was going to go. But when they finally came around to announcing that it was going to be replacing Muppet Vision 3D, it was interesting how they announced it because they didn't say anything on social media about it. And not to mention, as of right now, I believe of this recording, they still haven't posted the Snow White trailer on YouTube. It seems that Disney may be going a different route in terms of when they announce things, perhaps as a brand management strategy. I could see somebody telling them to do that to basically to try and limit the amount of negative feedback that is visible on these things as when you post them on X or YouTube, the comment sections and the downvoting and things like that can be easily seen by people. But on that topic, we have an article here from blog Mickey that talks about the silence on this and maybe a new strategy for them moving forward. So we're gonna read through this and give some thoughts on it. So hi, I'm Jared of Capture the Magic. And again, this is from Blog Mickey and it says, Disney avoids posting about Muppet Vision 3D rock and roller coaster changes on social media. It says Walt Disney World will permanently close Muppet Vision 3D and rock and roller coaster likely next year, but you wouldn't know that if you were exclusively following the Disney Parks accounts on social media. While the theme park giant released details about the closures, and what comes next for the attractions on its blog, none of Disney's social media accounts that we checked announced the news as of publish time. We checked the Disney Parks and Walt Disney World handles across Facebook, Twitter, Threads, Instagram, and TikTok. The move is likely to avoid backlash from a fan community that did not handle the news well. I think that's exactly what they're doing because they know that what they're currently doing, more than likely they've been receiving negative feedback and they either don't want to hear it or they don't want the perception of the negative feedback to be that visible, uh, perhaps to investors or just the general public. Uh, it says it's relatively rare for Disney to avoid announcing news on any of its social media channels, especially when that news concerns significant changes at its theme parks. Even recent unpopular decisions, such as the closure of Tom Sawyer Island and the Rivers of America and Magic Kingdom, made it onto Disney's social media channels. The comment sections were mostly filled with negative remarks about the Magic Kingdom changes, but at least the information was out there. And that's exactly why they're probably doing this is because, again, they're not getting positive feedback about this. Uh, and instead of listening to that feedback, they're just going to continue going the way they're going. I, I believe that's part of what is going on here. To put this in perspective, there was an all new concept art shared closures of attractions and experiences and significant details about the Muppets taking over Rock and Roller Coaster for an all new experience. None of that was shared by Disney with its fans on social media. While I think that Monsters Inc. Land will be received by the average Disney guest, it is a better use of the space than what is there currently. I'd also like to see Disney have the confidence in the plan to post it on social media where the fans can speak. A blackout on the news doesn't instill confidence and indicates that Disney knows that the change is unpopular with its most loyal fans. I mean, I think many people in the comments and that, that read this would probably disagree uh, that Monsters Inc. Land is a better use of that space. I've said before on this channel, I'm not, I really don't feel one way or the other about the Muppets. I've been, you know, I enjoyed them as a kid. Uh, I've enjoyed Muppet Vision 3D. I can understand moving it here, you know, Monsters Inc. because it's a, you know, in terms of real estate in a theme park, it is a, you know, a, a popular area, obviously right before you go into Galaxy's Edge. Uh, in potentially, I say potentially, they could move, you know, they're going to put the Muppets ride over in Rock and Roller Coaster. They could put Muppet Vision 3D back there in that theater once the visit, the villain show runs its course. Not saying they will, but I guess that is a possibility. But I'm sure many people would disagree with what he says here. You know, me personally, I'm not going to act like, you know, I'm outraged by it and I'm not like necessarily in favor of it. I'm just sort of stuck in the middle watching it. And I understand where people are coming from on both sides of it. So I'm just kind of, you know, looking at the reactions on, on both sides there. That said, I have to start to wonder out loud if the opinions of hardcore fans simply don't matter. Sure, Disney doesn't want to have hundreds of negative comments under an announcement showcasing the future of one of its theme parks, but Disney certainly isn't changing course based on the predictable backlash from its biggest fans. And that is part of the issue with Disney is they don't listen to their fan base. I, th I have felt a long time now that a lot of the IPs they even choose to go with don't seem to make a lot of sense. I, I, again, I'll say, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't understand why they don't do Arendelle in Magic Kingdom. I'm not even a, a Frozen fan, but that is the biggest animated movie franchise that they've ever had. And you have one ride in Epcot, and you've seen what they've done in Tokyo Disney, and you've seen the, the Tangled ride and things. There's a lot of IPs and rides that I think people would be excited for. 
presumably if they weren't replacing already things that people enjoyed like Muppet Vision 3D and Rivers of America and all these other aspects of things, if they were actually expanding it, I think people would be excited. But every time that Disney announced something new coming, you have to wait and see, oh, what it, what's it replacing? Because this is typically how Disney does stuff. To the contrary, Disney Experiences chairman Josh Giamaro has pushed forward with changes that he knew would be unpopular to Disney's biggest fans. To state this as simply as possible, more people will book vacations for the new Cars-themed attractions in Magic Kingdom than we're booking vacation for Tom Sawyer Island. Similarly, Disney's bottom line will be far more positively impacted by a Monsters, Inc. roller coaster than Muppet Vision 3D. But the problem with that, I'm not necessarily disagreeing. I think it can be attractions, but you can expand what you're doing and add these attractions without removing the attractions where these things are going to go. So you could expand Magic Kingdom, just like you are with Villains Land, put cars back there. I don't think anybody would really be upset about it. I've said before, I think a cars attraction makes a lot of sense. Now, being in Frontierland, I don't think that makes any sense. I think if you're going to replace anything, cars themed attraction and Tomorrowland Speedway makes a lot of sense considering that's already a car-based attraction there, but it's just what it's replacing. Same thing with, with Monsters, Inc. Land. I think a lot of people would be excited for this if it wasn't for the fact that it was replacing Muppets. You know, there's areas to expand even Hollywood Studios to be able to fit this in there, but that's not how Disney operates, and they know that, and I think that's why they're basically, you know, running and hiding on social media. Disney Experiences is looking to the future, aiming to capture new audiences and new dollars. Recently announced changes reflect that. At the time, they appear to be acutely aware that these changes are not popular with current hardcore fans and have chosen not to publish the recent announcements on social media. Right now, there are no indications that fan backlash is steering Disney's decisions in the slightest, except on whether or not they should post about the changes on social media. I think potentially them having the Muppets take over Rock and Roller Coaster is actually them seeing and hearing the fan backlash. I, I would be really curious if that was in the original work because I highly doubt that was originally what was planned here. So I, I would guess a venture at this that they saw the backlash about this. And, and you know when they announced at the D23, the rumors out there and the reports saying that they didn't know where they were going to put this land. I think they knew where they were going to put this land. I think Josh Diamaro got on stage at D23, announced this stuff, knowing some of the stuff. You know, the, the Rivers of America was a known thing, and I think they saw the backlash about that. And then they weren't. They basically didn't want to drop the news that Muppet Vision 3D was going away, and so they just sort of like, oh, Monsters Inc's coming. And then everyone's asking, you know, where are you putting it? And I think that probably led them to having the Muppets take over Rock and Roller Coaster because Aerosmith now is a retired band. You're not going to get as much backlash about replacing Aerosmith. So I do think perhaps they did listen on that front. Now, when you're talking about these things being a draw, yeah, I, I agree with that. The Monsters Inc. Land and new, new attractions bring new people to theme parks. That's just kind of how it goes. So in it, you know, in of itself, Monsters Inc. Land, yes, I think that would be a draw. A cars based attraction, yeah, I think that could be a draw as well. But it's just also the fact that and this goes into like movies and shows. When you anger your most loyal fan base, they're also going to be negative about the changes that you're making. Whereas if you actually did things that your hardcore fan base enjoys, they become your biggest, you know, promoters out there. So when you do something they don't like, they will endlessly criticize it, spread that, you know, whatever it is, the, the bad image, the negative comments out there that they don't want to hear. But again, if you did what they wanted and they were happy with it, then they're going to sing your praises. And a lot more people are drawn to it in that way. And I think this is the major mistake that not only Disney, but many companies and studios have been making the past decade, which is not doing things in the spirit of the fan base. So you can appease, you can do things for both, both people. It comes down to Disney. I don't think they want to spend the money to expand land because developing land is expensive, especially in Florida, considering a lot of it's swamp land. And like when you look at the villains land out there, I have my doubts on when that'll be done. I, I, I would say beyond 2030, considering they have to develop all that land before they even get to building it. And them just basically seemingly not being you know prideful about the decisions they're making, knowing they're going to get backlash. It's not a good look for them. It just seems like that they're almost ashamed of the things that they're doing because they probably think the hardcore people are going to get mad about this, but they're going to make more money and they're going to bring in new crowds. And it's sim again, it's just like what the studios and have done on the movies and, and TV shows where they get an IP, 
They and look at Star Wars. They initially do some things that people are like, oh, okay. And then as it continues to go, they alienate the existing fan base to try and get a new fan base. And it never really works. I don't know of an instance where a fan base was replaced by a new fan base that worked out really well. I mean, if you do know one, let me know in the comments. But I can't recall one off the top of my head. And again, it doesn't have to be this way. You can add new things here. And you know, you layer this on top of the fact with Muppet Vision 3D, it was Jim Henson's last project he worked on. And I, you know, the Muppets are not the biggest IP and I don't think they've been really caught on, especially since Jim Henson died, but it still has its audience. It's still a show that people enjoy. It's an area people do like. And you could do some things to spruce up that area, you know, a gift shop for the Muppet show. Like you can do a lot of things that would bring, you know, fans of that property in there. And you could still build your Monsters Inc. land, perhaps back there where Lightning McQueen Racing Academy is or another spot. But it's just the simple fact of the things that they're replacing. They know they're not going to be popular. But I think on basically what it points to is Disney just doesn't care. If, if they were posting this and asking for your feedback, that would be one thing. But they're seemingly just not doing that because I think they have a vision. Whether that vision works or not, I don't really know. We'll have to wait and see on that. But at the same time, they're in the midst of increasing prices yet again in 2025 like everything's more expensive they've taken away perks like the theme park experience has changed so much in such a short amount of time and then you have increased competition with universal and i will admit i think universal does a really good job listening or trying at least giving the appearance or the effort to listen to their fan base they they send you know i know disney sends out surveys but universal does as well and they seem to really try and at least understand the pulse of what people want on some level. And you're never going to get it perfect. Disney's never going to get it perfect. Universal's never going to get it perfect. But it comes down to like how you perceive, are they trying? Are they listening? Are they doing their best? And I think when it comes to Disney, I don't think people feel like they're being heard. I think Disney has a plan for what they want to do. And they really don't much care about the hardcore fans because I think in their minds, they think the hardcore fans will always be fans and they'll keep coming no matter what. So we don't have to listen to them. And I think, again, this is the hubris attitude that has gotten lots of companies in trouble, assuming that their fan base is just always going to be there no matter what. And this is why I've many times said competition is a great thing because if Disney's not going to listen to their fans and they're not going to do what they want, Universal is building something really incredible, especially with Epic Universe, and they're going to continue to grow. A lot of people could very well go over there, check it out, and you know enjoy the experience. So with more competition, it is going to force Disney eventually, if they're not doing it now, eventually to have to listen and be more receptive to what their customers want. And I think this is something that a lot of companies are finding out right now. But Going forward with this, I don't think this is a good strategy. I think if it continues and Disney doesn't release trailers that they know we're not going to get a good reception, if you think about the Snow White trailer, that thing has been pan the, well, the, the initial trailers, the teaser trailers, and obviously there's been a bunch of stuff about that movie and Rachel Zegler and the things that she said. Uh, a lot of stuff goes into that, but the fact that they did not release the latest trailer on YouTube kind of shows you exactly why they didn't in terms of this here as well, because they knew the comments and the downvoting, and that would be a story in of itself. So I think they're caught like trying to make Snow White work on some level. And I think here, when it comes to Monsters, Inc., they just don't want the negative backlash out there because that's going to be a topic of conversation. So they feel like they can kind of hide from it. I don't think it's going to work. I think people are going to voice their opinions here on YouTube or even on social media, whether or not Disney posts about it or not. But it seems like maybe they just want to be in an echo chamber where they don't have to hear it. I don't think it's a good idea, and I really wish they would be more forthcoming and listen to the fan base. But I really, in, in terms of this current iteration of Disney, I don't think really they have much interest in that. And I think that they feel like, I suppose, they have a plan that is going to work. We'll have to wait and see if it works out. But I think ultimately not listening to your fans and just basically shunning them on some level, not wanting to hear what they have to say, isn't a great look. And it's not going to instill a lot of confidence in your customers. But either way, that's going to be it though for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of coverage here of Universal Studios, Epic Universe, Disney World, and pop culture. And let us know in the comments, do you think that Disney isn't posting things on social media so they don't have to listen to the backlash? Or do you think they have other reasons for not doing so? And until next time, we will see you in the parks.